Welcome to another edition of the News Review. In this edition, the Yemeni army says that a large-scale drone and missile strike operation against sensitive targets in Saudi Arabia. Army spokesman Yahya Sari says ballistic missiles and over a dozen drones were used in the operation deep inside the kingdom. Sari also said that the overnight strikes hit targets at three sites, including those in the Saudi capital Riyadh and the southern city of Abha. He warned that military operations against Saudi-led coalition will continue and expand until a siege on Yemen is lifted. The attacks follow those on Abha airport less than a month ago. The Yemeni army frequently launches drones and missiles into Saudi Arabia. That is in retaliation for five years of Saudi-led aggression that has killed tens of thousands of Yemenis and pushed the country to Now, in order to discuss that further, we're joined by Mr. Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, joining us live from Sydney, and also Mr. John Stepling, author and commentator, joining us from Norway. Thank you very much uh, to both of you gentlemen. Now, let's begin with uh, Mr. Anderson. Uh, these strikes are sending a message to Saudi Arabia. Do you think they're getting that message? Yes, I think they are. Um, the uh, strikes on military bases in southwest Saudi Arabia are a continuation of, of previous strikes and the armed forces of Yemen have made it very clear that these are until the attacks on the civilian centers in Yemen cease. An effective way of trying to roll back the aggression that the Saudis have been punishing the Yemeni people with for the last six years. So, Mr. Stepling, uh, Mr. Anderson believes that the Saudis are actually getting the message. Have you seen any signs of that? And let's not forget that the U.S. has also, at least in words, said that it is not backing this war any longer. Well, yeah, the, what the U.S. says is um, relatively meaningless because, you know, they say anything they feel like at the moment because they view all of this as a kind of exercise in perception management. Um, and public opinion turned against this aggression um, sometime about a year ago, previously for at least the, the American public. Um, and, and the thing is, Biden takes office and immediately starts bombing in Syria, moves troops over there. He's clearly going to return to the um, attempts to remove Assad and and uh, and what he does with the Saudis in Yemen is an open question um, but I can't imagine that that he will throw um, uh, bin Salman under the bus about this but but you know with the question that looms over all of this um, retaliation aggression all that is is why this aggression ever took place in the first place. I mean, Yemen is the poorest country in the Arab world. Are now um, a, a just reduced to rubble. I mean, it's a massive, almost unimaginable humanitarian catastrophe. There have been outbreaks of cholera. I don't know, I forget the figure, the number of millions of people that have been displaced. Um, and the Saudis bombed hospitals, they bombed water for purification plants they you know they they committed all manner of, of war crime but the US protects the Saudis and, and this is more or less kept off uh, of, of the media but uh, why is why is it still going on and and what is there left for the Saudis to achieve in a sense they've been defeated already because um, nothing has changed really in Yemen They've inflicted enormous suffering on the people, but um, you know the the raison d'etre was somehow that this was connected to Iran. No proof was ever established. Iran offered rhetorical support for um, Yemen, but the Houthis, but uh, there's no proof of anything more than that. So the whole thing is um, it always has felt to me like a, a a reason to use up U.S you know, weaponry, use up the bombs and then you can buy more bombs because there's no, um, there's no, you know, perceivable uh, reason for, for the Saudis to keep inflicting, um, 
this kind of, of suffering on, on the Yemeni, I just a certain point, and public opinion is very much against it. So. Thank you very much. Now back to Mr. Anderson. Uh, Mr. Anderson, do you uh, actually, Mr. Stepling pointed out to the fact that this war is already lost. The Saudis themselves have time and again mentioned uh, that they never expected this war to take so long. Uh, how long do you think they will continue knowing that this was not the easy war that they were expecting? Yes, they're, they're looking for a way out. That's certainly the case. Uh, there have been a series of military defeats, um, despite the damage inflicted on the Yemeni population. The capacity of the Yemeni armed forces to resist has been substantial and perhaps unexpected in many courts, despite the weapons that the US has sold to the Saudis. Now, um, about two years ago, they started trying to talk to or having peace talks broken through Oman at one stage with Iran, basically. They were sort of looking for an intermediary way out. And uh, nothing much came of that. But since then, there's been a number of strikes on military sites and airports in, in Saudi Arabia. And so, uh, plus, I think uh, with uh, it's not entirely clear that uh, MBS is going to survive in Saudi Arabia. The, uh, President Biden has now uh, you know, raised the issue of the murder of the, the the Saudi man in Turkey. And it's possible that they may change puppets in Saudi Arabia because they have a public relations problem because uh, there has been this change in... Remember also that uh, President Biden has renounced the idea of supporting the Saudi war on Yemen, but has said he was going to help Saudi defend themselves from aggression from Yemen. So this, in a sense, poses a challenge to the Biden regime whether they can avoid escalation in this type of situation. And one of the ways they might do that is perhaps to bring about some change of regime in Saudi Arabia. But there's going to be some sort of face phase saving measure they'll look for to try and back out of the bad situation that the Riyadh is in. Thank you very much. Mr. Stepling, uh, do you believe that these uh, strikes coming from uh, the part of Yemenis is enough to uh, bring this war to an end? Well, yeah, I mean, your other guess was quite right, and I've said this too, that regime change in Saudi Arabia is, is not out of the question, and um, uh, Mohammed bin Salman is a, is a PR nightmare at this point. He's radioactive, and, and the, the CIA report um, connecting him to Khashoggi's um, really gruesome assassination uh, you know, suggests that, that his days are numbered. And if that happens, uh, then the U.S. has, a, as your other guest said, a face-saving um, mechanism in place, and, and they will whitewash the whole thing and, and bring in somebody else. But um, there might be more substantial changes um, in, in uh, the monarchy uh, besides just been signed. Uh, the 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 fact that they execute people in the public square, that women can't drive, et cetera, et cetera, the endless human rights violations, um, and executions, I think, almost tripled under bin Salman. Um, all of this is is a you know a perception problem, and uh, there there may be really giant reforms um, imposed from outside the kingdom. Um, what happens with Yemen? I mean, you know, Yemen has fought with great resiliency and defended themselves with great courage actually but but the country is a is a is a wreck and and it's going to take some time to rebuild so discussions of of winning and losing are are relatively meaningless in this context but yeah i think the saudis will withdraw soon i don't think they have much choice actually um but the u.s for the u.s and israel it's very important that somehow Iran will be blamed for all of this, and and you can count on that um, that happening as well. In in what way or by whatever, you know, um, logic they they employ, uh, Iran will somehow be to blame for all of this in the end. Thank you very much, Mr. John Stepling, author and commentator, joining us from Norway, and also. Mr. Tim Anderson, director of the Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies from Sydney. Thank you very much to both of you gentlemen for joining us on this edition of the News Review. And also thanks to all of our viewers for following us.